<laughs> There's a total of three handouts going around. You got one. Joey, you can make sure you got one from the notebook. Yes. Okay, we have panel 30. We're going to open the April meeting of the Seniors Committee. And public session, seeing no one, uh, we'd like to introduce. Uh, Maybe uh, Joe could stand up and just introduce hey. himself and who he is within the Senior Center. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Joe DeBlaze. I I live here in Northampton. I'm in, I live in Ward 3. And, oh, my, uh, my ward! My ward, too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how I had an unknown cheering squad. <laughs> I hear me. I'm, I'm, I'm retired and, I'm a, and, and went back to school at Polio Community College for Human Services, and I'm here as an intern. Oh, great. Yeah, welcome. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. I'd like the approval of minutes for the March 13th meeting. Do I hear a motion? That they I'll make a motion on. to approve. I'll second it. Second by Jim. Does anyone have any corrections? Or any? All in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 They are accepted. report today and Joanne Brooks is here and you're on. Okay, I'm going to do two things at once. <laughs> um, just to bring everyone up to date, we have about 4,300 folk, well between the ones that Bob delivers to the businesses and homes and things like that, doctor's offices, and the subscriptions, we have about 4,300 folks for um, the Con Street Chronicle mailing. Mm. So that's, it, it goes up and down, it fluctuates, you know, with, when I get the deceased list, it goes down a little bit. But people are hearing more about it, and I've been getting phone calls, and people have been that's coming nice. in and signing up their little slips, I'd like to receive mm. it, and more people are coming in, what, what do you offer, and things, so it seems to be getting more publicity, and I've heard some feedback a little bit from a few folks about the four page insert. Some people say, well, I don't get the Gazette, but I buy it that day, or how can I get it? So we tell them how to get it, you know, buy the Gazette for that day. And what I do is try and post it on the website and Facebook. I don't post the paper on Facebook, but I'll say, you know, I'll link it to the website so they can see it on, on the website as well. So it's posted on those places, along with the insert. We have the ability to post the insert on the city website and the link to the Facebook oh, page as well. Okay. So it, it's coming it's coming uh, around and I'm continuing to try and solicit ads. So if anyone knows of any businesses or whatever that might that you might think might want to put an ad or sponsor a page or put a small professional business development, you know, like in the phone book type of thing, please let me know and I'll get them the information on pricing. The next cycle of uh, advertising is going to be coming up. We, we do it in six and six times a year, so we do it in a yearly cycle. It just makes it easier than to have people come in through, through the middle of the year. So if they call and there's only three issues left, I'll say, okay, for these three issues, it's going to cost you X. And then when you come around to the new cycle, you know, it's just easier. And we're looking, you know, we have to look at pricing and things of that nature. We're going to look at the letter as well and see if we need to we re redo the letter and things. Um, I'm still enjoying it. Um, trying to get more media publicity. We had Channel 40 in here for a couple things. Channel 22 in here for a couple things. Uh, the May, the Health and Safety Fair is going to be coming up. I'm trying to get out publicity for that to, to the TV. I got it posted on the calendars that I'm aware of. Joe's been posting some flyers. So if anybody wants flyers or anything to help out with the publicity, that would be wonderful. And uh, there's a lot of other things and little things that I do, and I'm having fun. <laughs> so the insert uh, that goes in the Gazette, uh, and that's every other month. 
that, that's like in 17,000 copies. So we're reaching people that we normally wouldn't because that's we good. need to let wow. everybody know who we are because we need community support. Right. Um, <coughs> and um, other things. Oh, and then um, the um, new, the advertising, as Joanne mentioned, you know, we do uh, display ads, but we also have the directory uh, and the donor directory that people will get their name printed once a year. All of that helps keep that, either the insert or the newspaper, the Times Street Chronicle, no matter what format it is in, is what keeps that paper going. Um, that paper pays for the printing, the um, postage, the uh, delivery, and then also part of the salary of the media marketing person. So money in and money out, so we always have to make sure we have advertisers, because that's the bulk of the uh, revenue for the, the paper. But the advertising can only be in the six uh, issues that we deliver. Right. Yes. Yeah, it can only be in the full newspaper because we can't have it ads paid to us and then it's right. inserted in the Gazette. Yeah. And right. the Gazette, you it's know, wouldn't be getting yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. But it was something we checked on, but that's, okay. yeah, that's the reality of it. Yeah. We tried. But if, if it, if the um, Pond Street Chronicle and the last Elder Vision has been nominated for Paper of the Year for senior centers in the United States. Excellent. It's going to be in the AARP. So if that comes out as AARP, that's small town paper, you know, senior, wow. senior. It, Thank you. It's just, Whoa. I didn't do it. I did not do it. I got it done, but I did do well, it. Well, that's anyway, part of it. So yeah, so, it's, it's, it's still, it puts our name out there. Yeah. Wow. 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 How do you find this out? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the okay. email link to there. there. It's kind of okay. cool. All right. Well, it's AARP small small senior paper or whatever something it's something like that. Okay. Wow. So wow. it's just put, putting our name out there. Excellent. Wow. What you gonna do next month? <laughs> Let's just take one day at a time. <laughs> I, I guess that's what we want. <laughs> uh, any more questions for Joanne? Okay. Thank you. I want to welcome, and I know the entire board. She'll help out. She's doing more things around here. Yeah, Mary's a very active volunteer. Does a great job with oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary went and got sworn in today with the city clerk, right? so she can be oh, at our meeting. Really yeah. Good. Good. Oh, yeah. Thank you. She was wishing the city clerk was out for vacation, but she was there. <laughs> Welcome, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the finance report, the FY14 and 15 uh, current yep. budgets. So our current budget, FY14, um, you have a ON and PS account here of the uh, funds. We are in the negative for the salaries, and again, that's because our revolving accounts um, are paying for a, a portion of all the salaries here. City has a, an appropriation to us, and the, the remainder of that salary uh, amount um, will be transferred from our revolving accounts on probably in May, because uh, the fiscal year ends as of June 30th. So right now we're in the negative there. Um, and then our OM account, uh, you can see we have uh, 2,746.56 uh, per set um, still. So that's pretty good for a few more months. Um, so there's you know, the city appropriation, and then of course we have um, our revolving accounts, which we pay for a lot of other expenditures in the building. Anything I can answer about this particular document? Uh, and then uh, for FY15, uh, I passed out the revised budget for the Council on Aging. It says Council on Aging and Senior Center, it's the narrative. It's a two-sided document. And um, the Spark Department responsibilities, the highlights for 2014 FY15. FY15 budget information. <coughs> and then on the excuse me. And then on the back 
that lists our um, department budget. And the um, item that changed is that communications, uh, meeting interpreters, was uh, put into our budget of $1,000 uh, because there's um, a lot of interpreters who are hired to come in here because in the city, uh, any uh, hearing impaired person who requests an interpreter, the city is obligated, as any city uh, or town would be obligated to hire an interpreter for the purpose of a hearing impaired person to be able to know what's happening in that meeting or that program. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually have money in our account now from the city. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, does that mean uh, because of, um, there's also mean people of, uh, who speak in, uh, in English as a second language, is that the same? Hearing. I mean, it says hearing impaired, but would that also the interpreter be for somebody who is um, Spanish, Spanish speaking or another language? I'm going to say no, because okay. this is under ADA. Okay. And, uh, okay. Language is not under ADA. Okay. okay. All right. But, you know, that's actually a very good point. Um, so, at the, uh, we had a department head meeting um, at the end of uh, March, and um, so the budget was passed out. And this is, uh, as far as I know, this is what we're um, having as our budget. But we um, are usually requested to go before city council um, and have questions asked and then to, you know, discuss some of our programs <coughs> and what our needs are and what we're doing with our, our funding. And it's a good time to advocate for other things that we're trying to accomplish here. And it's always good to inform. When you go to that meeting, will you tell us so we can come yep, support yep. you? Yeah, and I know last year a number of you came to the meeting and it was um, beneficial. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I know when they set them up, I will let everybody know. Do you have a question on the budgets? <coughs> and we'll move on to the director's report. Yes. Well, it's hard to believe that um, we're still talking about March, but we had our last meeting and then a number of things that happened. The paddle walk happened, um, and that was quite successful. We had a manager <coughs> who volunteered his uh, time and experience. Mike Kaling, again, uh, is the Irish humorist. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you probably all saw that there was a very nice picture in the Gazette of um, the event. And then, of course, in our Constant Chronicle, we had a nice um, collage of uh, pictures from that. And we are going to be evaluating that because the numbers um, in terms of participants is dropping. Um, and so we're anticipating coming up with another idea. But, you know, there's a lot of discussion and time to do that. Um, but the numbers have really dropped off. Um, participants. Um, we're working with Growth Food Northampton again this year. Um, Michelle and I met with uh, members from Growth Food Northampton. And, um, this year they're going to be buying 30 shares, um, which the share is $100. They pay for 90 of it and then $10 is paid by the 30 individuals who are selected by lottery to participate in this from the Northampton uh, senior community. Um, it is income eligible, and we hope to have the applications available here um, in mid-May. Um, that's not a guarantee, but you know, usually the uh, shares begin in uh, July. So it's a great program, and it brings some very uh, valuable fruits and vegetables <coughs> to um, seniors. Uh, five College Learning Retirement began their series here. It's going very well. Um, this year we did choose to provide the coffee and tea for them. Um, we didn't do that last year just because you know we don't have a food service person, but we're working on you know getting that up for them and we do get um, paid for that. It is a, a billable item. Um, and it's just a very nice group of people to be working with. Uh, Crystal and I have been meeting um, with uh, Charles DeRose, uh, many of you may remember him as being the former owner of WHMP and the Daily News oh, yeah. yeah. Gazette. And you know, he, he's a, a man about town in terms of knowing everybody and having influence um, in the field of uh, writing uh, and communications, I should say. And so he's working with us um, to help direct some marketing ideas and you know what we need to know the, within our community and it's just, I think, a very positive uh, direction for us to get that 
outside input from somebody who really knows um, the community. Um, we had a meeting uh, with Casa Latina, which was requested by uh, Councillor Miriam Labarge um, because she sits on the CDBG uh, committee where the um, community development block grant money uh, organizations can apply um, and receive funding if they're um, chosen. Uh, and we used to actually receive CDBG funding, but um, Casa Latina, uh, Lillian. Torres spoke at that, and there was a question about you know working with the senior center, and um, the comment was that um, the senior center isn't um, either welcoming or friendly uh -huh. to um, Latinos. So um, Council Barge pulled together a meeting, um, which was a very beneficial meeting, um, and um, I was at that meeting. <coughs> uh, Crystal, as the assistant director, excuse me. <coughs> Michelle Dillman as our social worker, Council Barge, and Peg Keller from CDBG. Um, and then um, two individuals from Casa Latina, and one of whom was uh, Lillian Torres. Um, so we had a great discussion about you know, what the senior center is lacking in terms, in terms of um, being able to assist um, Latinos. Um, and, and so we're going to be meeting again in the beginning of May. Uh, but it was a healthy discussion and we'll be able to um, see what we have to offer and how that communication can get out to um, to Casa Latina to get it out to uh, individuals. And we already were doing some things, but now I think there's a more concerted effort to have various things put in place so that um, you know we can be all encompassing, which you know we think we are. But sometimes you have to stand back a little um, and somebody points something out to you. Um, so you know, I, don't, I don't know the whole detail to um, exactly what the um, issues were other than I, you know, I did ask, like, what does it mean to be unwelcoming or unfriendly? And um, apparently um, uh, a, a woman came in. Um, who were Spanish speaking and she either said hello or somebody didn't say hello or something you know she just didn't feel like people were paying attention to her when she came in. The other thing that was mentioned was um, about the lack of assistance when the elections are held here but we don't have anything yeah. to do no, no. with the elections um, yeah. but you know that can be passed on to the city clerk who handles the election and you know just being aware that people of you know various languages may be having problems and in this case a Spanish speaking uh, individual so beyond that I don't know um, if there's more um, if there is I'm sure it will come out in um, additional meetings but you know, I think it's a good contact. And years ago, we did work with Casa Latina. We did a um, sewing program mm -hmm. with um, all Spanish-speaking women, and that's all that joined. It wasn't like men were excluded. And oh. then we had, um, <laughs> uh, and I'll just mention his first name, Frank, who who was also um, Spanish-speaking, who would use our van go pick everybody up, and then they would sew together, and he. You know, as a tailor, and he um, cool. did a great job, and um, and that was a nice program. But again, that was years ago. So, what is it now? We need to look at um, in 2014. Uh, yesterday, there was a meeting with PBTA. They had a hearing on the proposed bus routes, and so I went to speak in favor of the bus route that's going to go um, if it, you know, if it isn't passed by the advisory board at PBTA to go by the survival center uh, because a lot of our seniors uh, do need transportation to get to the survival center but on a number of occasions we have individuals coming into the senior center and not necessarily just seniors who are looking for um, various food options and so when you let them know one of them is going to the survival center they say how can i get there well now if there's a bus route and say you can catch the bus over at Walter Salvo and you can get up to the survival center to get your food. So there were a number of people yesterday at this hearing um, to speak in favor of many things with bus routes, but a, a, a majority of them were speaking in favor of uh, the route going to the survival center. And also the uh, Commission on Disabilities, which I sit on, I'm sorry, the Commission on Disability, which I sit on. I, I was um, asked to send a letter on their behalf to support this as well, so they are in favor of it. Okay, May's coming up. 
May, there are many things happening in May, but the most important one is that May is Older Americans Month. And so that is usually a huge um, event for us for the whole month. So we have many programs that are going to be um, like special events. We have a lot of uh, different speakers coming in. And we'll have a brochure on that that you'll all get. But um, a number of that items are going to be printed in the Constant Chronicle, which you'll be getting next week. Post the printer on Monday, so you'll get that next week. Um, and so two of the big things that we're doing um, is the open house on May 18th from 1 to 3. It gives uh, people an opportunity to come in, <coughs> check out the place, get tours. We'll have entertainment, refreshments. Um, we'll have some displays up. And hopefully um, many of you as board members can come to that um, to meet and greet uh, uh, people coming into the building. And we're also hoping to have a couple of Spanish-speaking um, volunteers at that. Um, and then May 18th from 1 to 3. And then, of course, our 12th annual Health and Safety Fair is happening May 22nd, open to the public 10 to 2. And um, each year that keeps getting bigger and bigger, and we welcome all of our exhibitors. Some are the same ones, some change. Each year it's a little varied. Um, and we did just get confirmation from the Lions I will be able that they will be here as well. And that's always a great thing for people to have a hearing test and an eye test. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor also has written a proclamation for Older Americans Month, and that will appear in the Chronicle. Um, and also it will be presented at the city council. So when I know which council meeting that is in May, I'll let you all know. So if any of you would like to come for that, and um, we can get that. He also did a proclamation for volunteer National Volunteer Month which is April, and as you know, we're having April 26th as our volunteer recognition breakfast. Hopefully everybody signed up for that. Um, and he, the mayor will be here to read the proclamation himself. And that's that's what I have for this. That's my report. Any questions for Patty on her report? And then we'll move on. Building new grounds for you. Um, well, it's starting to be spring cleanup, and our gardener is um, cleaning out the flower beds. We're going to be ordering mulch um, for him to be using in mid May, and he has um, great ideas for planting a lot of um, items out there. Um, many of them did not survive the winter because of the huge snow piles that were out there, which, if y'all notice, there's no snow out there. <laughs> Which is good because now we have our parking spaces back. Um, so he's been working on that. The uh, other thing I'm going to um, mention um, more fully is, and you've heard this idea before, but the Netto family wanted to do a meditation garden um, outside. Um, this came, idea came up after Mary Netto had passed away. So I met with um, two of Mary's sons and a granddaughter. Excuse me. <laughs> um, about a garden out there, so they're drawing up plans, and I would I would like to ask the board one either to discuss it and come up with a recommendation and vote that you are in favor of it. Um, and the cost is coming totally from the family. There is no cost coming from the council on aging and senior center. <laughs> Would that be located uh, <clears throat> over by the Walter Sowell section over in there? No, actually, it would be located at the end of the building. So if you were in Social oh, Bay, that open that, yeah, okay. area oh, yeah. right there yeah. before the oh, yeah. um, switch. Yeah. Yes. I call it the yeah. hip. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Out there. So there would be places. It's a retention like, yeah. pond. Yeah. That's a thank you topic. It's a retention pond. pond. I couldn't think of the word, Jim. Uh, but a retention pond. It, it saves us on taxes, believe it or not. Yes, and I'm, I'm fortunate I've never found anybody in there. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go there. That was always my concern. <laughs> so, um, so I'd like to present that idea as an idea for a um, board movement that, you know, that the board would support, um, you know, the Netto family putting in a, a meditation garden. Um, in, in conjunction, we're, we're working with us. It's not that they're just going to do it independent of anything we want. Um, I had a question. I think it was a great idea. However, in terms of maintenance, because as you know, gardening you know, is a, a constant 
you know, keeping it up and stuff like that, would the family be responsible for maintaining the garden, or will that be part of our, you know, our garden or groundskeeper's responsibility? Um, I'm going to say it's probably a combination of both. Okay. So when we say our responsibility, it would be getting volunteers. And, okay. Um, Sounds good. You know, Anything that your dog takes some tender loving care. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know what? There's probably going to be a lot of volunteers for that because when we did the survey, that was what people asked for, if I remember correctly. It was 10 or 15 people that wanted to, that lived in this area that didn't have the opportunity to play with plants and whatever to get yeah. their fingers mm -hmm. all crappy. Mm -hmm. You know, but that was one of the things they wanted. So I think if we go back to that, You'll have a base to come play yeah. with. Well, it's good recall. Uh, and we do have a lot of uh, tools and wheelbarrow that we have donated because we started collecting that stuff as we moved to the senior center. We need a donor of that to uh, give them the right to do it. Yeah, I, I, what I guess would be important is that the board supports the idea of the Netto family. Um, so you need a motion to yeah. support that? Yeah. Uh, I'll make the motion that we vote to support the metal recommendation for uh, meditation. meditation. Guard. 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 Second, Second by the Second. Third, we all vote. Uh, any discussion on it? John, because it's very nice. Yes. Um, I don't know. Patty may have already discussed this, but just about design and what it, how that's going to happen and if it's going to be a design that's you'll be what we'll be involved in or you'll be involved in to make sure that it's something that we can maintain year to year and that's yeah. safe and mm -hmm. um, yeah so. um, um, that's a good question um, they did bring a lot of books and um, Kevin Netto who is a contractor Builder. is going okay. to be yeah, um, and I'm not saying just him but uh, putting together a, a schematic of what the garden could look like yeah. and I think one of the important things for me is that you know it, it's it's contained, but that you can also, if you're somewhere on the road or, you know, near it, you can see into it because I don't think we want any sort of enclosed areas in here because it could lead to um, sort of hot spots for illegal activity. I'm not saying that would happen, but, you know, if you're sort of uh, out of sight, out of mind, but um, I just think it would be a safer thing for our area. But, you know, as the plans develop, I can call. Uh, board members or email board members to say, oh, there's a design here. Would you like to come and look at it? Very nice. All in favor of Jim's motion, please say aye. 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 <coughs> no opposed? She did. That's accepted. Thank you. That's all I have no problems. Yep. That's all I have We'll move on to old business and Name change. Okay. <laughs> Pick up this up. <laughs> yeah. Kathy must go. Pardon? Did you come up with a name? Uh, this is old business. A new name for our company. Oh, name? no. Oh, uh, Did anybody? I got 35 of them. I didn't bring anyone. No, but they're just stupid. Oh. You know, it's just. Some of them are all right, but I just don't like any of them. So okay. that I worked at it. Just everybody that I talked to. And I talked to a lot of folks that. What's they, wrong with it? That's why? right. Mm -hmm. Why? So. That was my question. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. We just have three or four. I don't know how many people are making all these ways, but most of the folks that I know seem to be okay with it. Maturing. Maybe it's how it is, right? So, it's not an agent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I would say, in looking, um, because I've done a little bit of research um, mm. that in. Uh, Massachusetts, you know, every city and town who agreed to have uh, a council on aging when, um, you know, the legislature said, you know, you can move forward with councils on aging and then the state supported it through the Department of Elder Affairs and the formula grant and all of that, um, that most of them are called um, COAs. Right. And uh, some of the bigger ones are called other things like the Department of Elder Affairs or uh, it sounds like Commission on Department. Elder Services. But they do more than we do. Right, they're, they're much bigger. I mean, you look at Springfield, and they have, what, five or six senior centers? Right. Yeah. What, what is Springfield's um, type? I mean, what do they call themselves in Springfield? I think it's Department of Elder Department Services. Of Elder oh. Services. Well, they're it sounds city. so stately. It just seems so big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have several senior well, centers, so I mean, you know, it's a, here we're just 
this is what we are. Yeah. And you know, then again, um, you know, we've had this conversation before about senior centers, and when we did a survey, people just said, call it what it is, it's a senior center. Yeah. 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 If you're driving through town, and you see, you know, like poor East Hampton. I'm sorry, East Hampton. But, you know, you don't know what it is. It's a, uh, what do they call it? Enrichment Center. Enrichment Center. Well, is that an enrichment center for a 12 year old or an enrichment center for a baby mm -hmm. kid or, you know? And you, you drive through and say senior center, you can visit if you're over 60. You know, that's what I, I drive along the countryside and see a senior center, I pull in and see what it looks like. If I saw Enrichment Center, probably wouldn't stop. And they'd be happy. So I guess it sounds like the sentiment is just leave it as the answer. Yes, would somebody make a motion to the fact that we keep it to the COA? I'll make the motion. We'll I'll second it. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Jim made yeah. the motion. Yeah. And any other discussion on it? Please. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No, you know, it is accepted. Okay. Welcome to the COA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the senior center of the COA. Exactly. That's right. You want to continue, Penny? Yeah, the senior tax workout program, which uh, again the mayor had announced at the inauguration that this was something he was moving forward on. Um, we had a meeting. Um, which involved the human um, resource director, the auditor, finance director, assessor, um, and the mayor um, to start formulating how this program was going to work in Northampton. Um, there are about 145 uh, communities in Massachusetts that have this same program, although each one can operate a little differently under what the state statute says that you can do. Um, so. Um, we're almost ready for uh, city departments to say what what they what their needs might be for volunteers uh, who are participants in this program. When I say volunteers, it's the senior participants. Um, and so by that working in a depart a city department, um, those hours equate to um, a dollar amount from your taxes. It's a tax credit. Um, so you know, just to let you know, it's moving forward, and hopefully, it's in place so that um, as of July 1st, uh, the participants can start earning their hours uh, towards, uh, oh, wow. and it's, um, the mayor had um, stated that it would be up to $1,000. Wow. And then, you know, some communities do 500, others do 750. So it varies on whatever the mayor presents to the city council for a vote. Is it income sensitive or some? Uh, yeah, it, yeah, in Northampton it is going to be income eligible. Some communities um, do not have income eligibility. So you could own, and this is a perfect example, in Nashville, you can have a $2 million home and you can apply for um, this opportunity uh, for a tax credit. So Northampton will be um, income eligible. So there'll be a number of slots, and you'll hear more about it. Uh, you know, because I'm sure there'll be a press release out on all the final um, facts of the uh, program. But, it, it, you know, I think it'll be uh, a very good program for seniors who are, you know, trying to, uh, and struggling to stay in their homes. And, you know, we all talk about aging in place and we would like to see people um, where they're living. And to do it without, you know, being, you know, went to your house, that you're just living to maintain your house. That, you know, it, this is just one other way to financially assist. So it's a good program the mayor came up with. We'll move on to the rental fees for use of the senior center. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I think Jeff, um, I passed out something to everybody in the sheet. This is a, a sheet on yeah, right. the schedule. Mm -hmm. the schedule. Do you have one? Oh, I have one, yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, so this is what I had, and then now Jim and um, Barbara Fungroli did some research on other places. So um, on what, in, I don't know if it was Northampton places that uh, you got information about what they charged? I did five in Northampton, five in East Hampton, three in Hadley, one in Hatfield, and two in Loyola. Oh, you're busy in 
I tried to get a the overall. Yeah. overall. But nobody offers the same things as we do. That's the hard part of it. It was like comparing apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. So I tried to switch them into making juice. <laughs> so um, when we opened in 2007, um, well, actually before we opened, because we knew people already wanted to come in here and start using the building, um, besides seniors, of course. Um, that we came up with uh, a fee structure, and that was looking at Smith Vocational School because they do rentals. Um, uh, the high, the public school system, what they did, looking at what the park did, um, the Elks, and maybe Smith College. That I'm not, I don't recall that as much um, to figure out what we could do here. And so, basically, that's what has, what you see in front of you. And then, of course, um, this in itself, other than, you know, let's just leave aside the rental uh, cost, you know, for using a room, that there are a lot of changes just on this based on um, the experience of the last year. I will say many times you do a rental and it's like, oh, we should have thought of that, or oh, we gotta be more careful. And I think many times it's like people have an expectation that, oh, I need four extension cords, or oh, yeah, yeah now I need this, or now I need that. That they, they really are responsible for a lot of this stuff, and I think just to be um, more firm about, well, here's what it's going to cost you, or oh, we didn't bring any napkins, or we didn't bring any, you know, plates, and, and I, I, you know, I have some real um, concerns about the use of the kitchen and some changes that we need to make. And, one of the big ones is there is a flat fee of $75 to use the kitchen. This kind of mirrors what the uh, public schools do, yeah. but that there really needs to be a staff person, and I say that a building monitor, somebody who yeah. knows the kitchen, who has to be in there. That rental person pays for them to be in there. Um, just because of what happens um, with the kitchen equipment. Because as you know, yeah, you know we have a certain amount in our city budget, but the rest of it we have to pay for. Mm -hmm. So when something happens, um, and, and we just recently did have a, it was a good experience overall, but there were some things with the kitchen that we were concerned with. Um, also, um, the silverware, I shouldn't say, the flatware and the dishes aren't going to be rented anymore. Um, there's a concern about the use of our coffee pots. And you know, I'm going to say, and I'm sure we've all had the experience um, of using another piece of uh, property by someone, and you know, you need this or you need that, and oh, look, there's the foil. I think I'll use half of it, or you know, and people don't treat it the same way you want. So I think by having a person in the kitchen, um, you know, and looking at what you can and can't do um, with the building, and so you know, it's like if you're using the great room, you're using the great room. You don't have the lobby to mm -hmm. right. have everybody hanging around with, mm -hmm. and yeah. as you know, you can't have food and drink lot. in many of the areas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the other thing too is that a custodian, um, and I talked to Central Services or even Bob about this, like when we have a rental, should we get a custodian? And that would be paid by the uh, group using it. Yeah. And that just mm -hmm. recently happened. Um, the building, the great room was being used. They did rent the kitchen. Um, and just from past experience with what the room looked like the next day, the building monitor last year called me and I came down on a Sunday morning, I'm sorry, a Saturday morning, and you know, spent three hours just picking up just to make it a little um, easier for <coughs> our custodian. But there was no um, custodian hired for that event. So as I said, you learn each time about doing things. So this past time, the uh, custodian came in the next day to clean everything up. Mm -hmm. So it worked much better. And, and you know, they really did leave the kitchen much cleaner and all of that. I mean, a few other issues with the kitchen, but, you know, overall it was a great group to have in the building. Um, but I think having mm -hmm. more specific responsibilities by them um, of what you can and can't do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Patty, on the uh, rental agreement, does that in writing so they actually see? But of course, you, sometimes you can't anticipate what what may happen yeah. and stuff like there's, that. There's there's a um, an application and then you know they have to sign off that they're responsible for it. In many cases they have to have a million dollar 
uh, insurance policy naming the city of Northampton in case something happens. Um, but then um, what we've started to have happen, because we have the AD system in there, that's like another whole contract. Um, but uh, that I have specifics about a particular group, and here's what you have to look at, and they have to sign off on it. So, you know. And if they I think it's important, but I don't know that they think it's important. Well, Just because they sign their name, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Overall, everything really does work fine in here. It's good having rentals. They are a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. some people you deal with one or two times. Other people, it's like every single day, or they're coming in, or this or that. <laughs> and, um, but it does help our budget. So it's mm -hmm. important to have people in the building. Now, yeah. we talk about a monitor. Are you having someone monitor them even during the, the regular work day? No. No, if, it's, if there's somebody in here renting during the day, like let's take five college learning and retirement, yeah. they pay to use the break room, but they aren't paying for building monitor because staff is here. Yeah. If it's something that would be in the building and it's like just too overwhelming because even if it's staff is here that there's a building monitor, then they, they, a building monitor yeah. would be paid. So I'd have to take that into consideration when um, I tell them what the fee would be to use the room. So I'm just saying, I didn't have to pay. This is, this, this is a little bit strange, but let's say you call your building monitor in on Friday or Saturday, okay? Somebody uses everything. The cash comes to you and then it goes to the building monitor that gets paid or does it go through the city and then they pay the building monitor? No. Um, the building monitor would pay, be paid through us through the city. So okay. if there's a, a rental fee, they pay us. Yeah. We deposit that in our city account. Yeah. And from the city account, we pay for the building monitor. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's no... There's I just no wonder about the tax anything. issues to, to, to jump to uh, Bob. If you just get cash. No, no. Stuff. So, and that's a good question. Um, the last rental, the custodian was hired for three hours, and so I invoice the uh, organization, and they are paying um, central services directly for Bob. Okay, and then Bob, Bob just gets a better check. Today. And then Bob would get um, a check that would uh, show his three hours over time. Okay. Over the building and so. <laughs> I think the facility's got a minimum of three hours. A minimum? The time they're called in, is that correct? I, I don't know that. I bet it's by contract. I don't know if I mean, I want to go out school because it's cold. Well, he was here three hours, so we're safe on this. I think you've got to be paid a minimum whether you want it for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will check minimum. that because I don't know. I'll check for some reason on that, you know, just in case you hire him for two hours and then you have 33. Yeah, I think it's a minimum of three hours. But I might be wrong. Something to check on, though, because it would. I can come back and buy this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, do you have do you have something you want to present as a a dollar amount, or what did you have? Thirty percent from where we are right now on everything across the board. Thirty percent increase, and that will still that, that will put us <coughs> anywhere between ten and fifteen percent below. All the other areas. Okay. So uh, just right this one right now. Uh, yeah, give, give us this right here. So just as for the general programming, so a room for a minimum of two hours, it would be thirty dollars is what we have now. Right. But if you say go up thirty percent, go thirty percent, thirty nine. So that would yep. be thirty nine dollars. Yep. Easier to okay. And that, in that, and everything else is forty four to forty five. Mm -hmm. Something in there, and some of them are 55 and 60, depending on how nice the rooms are and stuff like that. So, I looked at that, and so we, Barbara and I looked at all the numbers and figured we still want to come under the point where it's still a public facility and we're still trying to offer something to the people who want to use it. So, let's not go to the high end, let's stick right. sort of mid range. Right. See what happens. Yeah. So then uh, $40 up 30%, yep. $100 up 30%, and one twenty-five up 30%. Yep. And then the $75 for the kitchen as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, could, we, we thought about doing each one differently, and we, we looked at the numbers. That's too much like work. Yeah, just, okay. just 30% yeah. mm -hmm. clicks it off. We're still, we're still well within acceptable range for everybody. 
Yeah. I know uh, Patty has a lot more work to do on it, so I do, would request that we don't vote on this at this meeting, you know. She'll come up with uh, the hard numbers. Yeah. So, what I, because I've already started to redo this whole thing, so this is really an opportune time to get it all in yeah. place and maybe mm -hmm. it would be effective, well, whatever you vote but maybe as of July 1st, mm -hmm. but I can switch all this out to be what the exact number is right. that you're talking about, yep. and then the other changes, and then you can vote on it um, as a package. So you can we'll do next, next uh, meeting. Is that agreeable to you, Jim? Pardon? Is that agreeable to you? Everything's agreeable in me. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you for your work. This was easy. I actually went and had a cocktail at every place to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to give us your bill. <laughs> no, I really wanted to see what they were offering for yeah. the money. And what the and what facilities the place looked like. like. Yeah. Yeah. It, was fun. it was fun to do. It really was. I enjoyed it. And here again, I could back it up and say, you know, we did this and did that. Um, some of the nicer places, I thought, were way, way overpriced. And for what we have, for what they can get for the money, I think it's a much better deal. Mm -hmm. So, but but we were so far under. I wanted to bring us up, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I suggest that I do this every year. Look at it each year. Mm -hmm. Look at it each year mm -hmm. about this time of year, mm -hmm. and I will volunteer to do that every year. Mm -hmm. That's but, his vacation. Yeah, <laughs> it, well, it's no, it's it actually because it stuff changes like oh yeah every every. Mm -hmm. it, when we first started this, and then I did it again, people told me they had already upped it 15 percent in the two months from yeah. December, January to now. So, because of the economics of everything around here, everything's yeah. going through. Tell me about. It. Yeah. Okay, so I'll uh, okay. update this. Uh, you can call it a draft, and yeah. then mm -hmm. uh, have it for you for the May meeting. Okay. Yeah, right. May meeting and. And the last thing I'm going to say about rentals is that the first priority and mission of what we do here is to provide programs and services and opportunities for seniors. seniors. The rentals are just there. Rentals are not the main focus of who we are. Um, although, you know, not everybody realizes that. And senior, mm -hmm. senior events would take priority over right. other things. Right. And that's something I try to explain to people who think that because they want a space, it's just automatically going to be available. Yeah, you know, I, it's like I have to justify that, you know, we're doing senior programs. Mm -hmm. We have something yeah. going on. So, um, but, you know, rentals are part of our budget, so we do need that. Okay. Do you have anything other on the roll of business, Patty? No. Does anyone have anything on the roll of business? Okay, we'll move on to new business. Jim, you're here regarding the trip to the Oh, Elder Day. Big City, yeah. uh, Big City Elder Day. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing trip. Barbara and I went. We both learned a tremendous amount. Uh, every time I wake up in the morning, I feel like, boy, I got a bad leg. Well, I came home that night and said, whoa, I got a bad leg. I was just really, really happy with that. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I was fascinated by the numbers of people that were there and what they were talking about. It really was an eye opener. And all of the boards should have been, sometimes should go to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I found out that care workers are only asking for 75 cents an hour raise, okay, to bring them to $11 an hour, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. And they were thinking, they were thinking, well, we'll give them 35. And I raised holy hell. You know, I jumped up and said, that's stupid. You know, 11 bucks oh, yeah. an hour. Mm -hmm. And it, it, because of the fact that state workers get a little bit more, so that was their whole thing was equal pay. Um, we met with <coughs> five different representatives. Um, Stan Rosenberg was probably the best for us. Yeah. He sat there and really listened to me. Um, I complained to Stan about um, people waiting for food on, the, on our list. There were... Uh, wait for yeah. wheels on wheels. Yeah. And yes, day before yesterday, a man called me and said, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Spencer. He said, we, Stan has, has taken the point that I have a new job and I have to track 
Who's waiting on meals on wheels <laughs> for the state? So he has an aide that's doing this. So, you know, people are doing these things. Um, we heard probably half a dozen people talk about the different programs and their state of the program. And across the board, I came home and was like, this is terrible. You know, but like something was wrong with this picture. Um, and the interesting thing is I went back a few days later for veteran stuff and it was even worse. So yeah, the uh, across the board, and, they're, and they listen. They really, really did. Some of them you know, kind of blew us off, sort of, you sort of felt that, but uh, I won't go to names naturally. But the um, cross the board was just tremendous and was something to see. And, and Barb was impressed. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for going. Yeah, that was very nice. Well, it's a, I'm also going to go to, what's it called? That conference? That one day conference? Oh, the yeah. Uh, I forget the name of that. Yeah, there's a elder conference in Holyoke. Oh, HC, uh, Holyoke, not at HCC. Yeah, yeah it HCC. is. It's a yeah, it's the the home care. They uh, okay. Highland Valley sponsors. Yeah. So I'm going to go to that. Yeah. Spend my forty bucks and go. So because I'm starting to get involved and learn more, and the more I learn, the more I need to get involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We like somebody like you. We'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Jim, and thank you for going down with Barbara. Uh, we'll move on now if no one has any questions for Jim. And Bob and Kathy are here, and yeah. Jim from Highland Valley, and Bob, you're using this open. Okay, uh, well, we had a, a meeting on Monday, on April 4th, for the Highland Valley Elder Division, I mean, Highland Valley uh, Elder Division. Elder Services Board. Uh, we got a uh, income and expense statement from uh, that has been produced. It's one of the first that's been produced uh, by uh, Highland Valley, and of course we have a new CFO, so we're starting to get some actual numbers coming out. Uh, the deficit is not as bad as it had been uh, originally discussed. It has been reduced considerably but still is the deficit. Uh, the uh, director, uh, executive director, gave us a report on uh, various uh, areas uh, that we've uh, incorporated a new online capacity to register for Meals on Wheels walk, that walk that we're going to have to walk upon. Uh, they've updated the uh, website uh, for Highland Valley Elder Services, so there's a donate button on there for people to donate money. Uh, they received $2,500 grant from the National Subaru Corporation in support of the Meals on Wheels program. And that was that Subaru delivered meals one day. They had the, uh, it was a national program for Subaru. And a local Subaru dealer uh, manager went out with a Meals on Wheels delivery man and delivered some meals that day because they took pictures. It was a promotion by Subaru. We got $2,500 grant from that. Uh, we received a $9,000 grant from the Bank of America philanthropic Foundation to support the money management program. We had asked for 20000 but they got 9000 So that's the money management program. And we, uh, of course, you know about the CDBG grants. We have one for North Hampton, and there's another one in for Westfield. Uh, these haven't been uh, approved yet, but they're in the, in the works. And then we're also in, included one of our board members who work for ServiceNets, uh, has uh, worked with uh, Jenna, Jera Jameson to get a uh, proposal for a farm program for $24,000, which was served, which is su support the Meals on Wheels program. Well, they already have a farm, sir. Uh, I, you know, I know some of the people that I work with are farm employees for Farm Naval Farm in Hatfield. Yep. And they already mm -hmm. have farm shares with it, too, now. So mm -hmm. they have eggs and so the price on that bump, 20, uh, That was uh, 24000 Now, this is a proposal so far, mm -hmm. but it looks good. And, uh, We had a couple of other uh, items, but the major item we had for 
that day was an executive session, which is of course confidential. Um, yeah. Don't you believe we might well should go into executive session to discuss this a little bit? Maybe to discuss it, but to give the result. Uh, we can okay. Do that. We'll do both. Give then. the result first. Okay. Can we give the uh, result? Is it public? Oh, the result is public. It's just okay. public. discussion is not. Okay. Uh, the result of the uh, executive session was that Gerard Jameson, who had been hired on a six-month probation, her six-month probation was up, and the question was to give her a contract or let her go. They let her go. She was terminated as of that day. So uh, that was the that was the, the whole process of the executive session was to work on that, and the result was that she was terminated after her uh, evaluation, her six month evaluation, and the board voted to terminate. So Nancy Maynard and Jackie La Lamarche is her name. Yeah, yeah, Jackie Lamarche, yeah. who's the CFO. They're going to be the new temporary executive directors until they can hire uh, another person. Well, I'll just make a comment. Yep. You might yeah, do. That, uh, you know, Jira, as you all know, came to one of our meetings, but um, she had met with me and I had other phone conversations with her. And, you know, as a director, I felt, wow, Highland Valley's actually going to have some true interest in what we as a Council on Aging want to do, want to accomplish, how we can work together. And I don't think I've ever had that sense of, of wanting to collaborate with an agency, meaning Highland Valley, as much as I did through Jira. She just, I think, was inspirational. And, you know, I know Highland Valley has its issues and problems, especially financially. But I thought, oh, the, the culture will change. And um, I thought it was very disappointing to see that she was not rehired. Um, I was one of the people who did an evaluation. I was sent an email to do that. And, you know, with just my limited exposure to her, I just thought she was a breath of fresh air and was very um, engaging and wanted to pull you into uh, what, Highland Valley was trying to accomplish, and again, what we're all trying to accomplish, and that is to provide uh, real services and benefits for seniors. Um, so I find it to be um, uh, very discouraging. Yeah. 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 That's my comment. But that was the result, and uh, that's uh, now the Highland Valley is uh, searching again for someone else. Back with the temporary Did you want to discuss anything else? Or no, I think we. Uh, I'm a little concerned right now. We need to move into executive session. Do we so? Do I make a motion for that? Or how do I do that? Yeah, we make. Yeah, yes, you can make a motion and you. Can I make a motion? We go into executive session. You have to say specifically why you want to go into executive. To discuss the council on aging's relationship with Island Valley. Would the uh, would Patty be invited to the Normally she is not, but uh, would she I have think to in this case she should be. That'd be yeah, so I that would mean Joe, you'd have to Joe has to come. <laughs> 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 and uh, it also means that once the board is back into a uh, regular session, you're welcome to come back in. Now, do we need a motion for Jim and I, or do we just make an announcement to the board? Well, you have to. I think you have to do something writing first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you need a resignation in writing? Mm -hmm. I think <coughs> I can say verbally, and then you can ask for a written. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I still have time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, Jim, and Bob, Kathy, you're. I'm, I'm, I'm pausing, but uh -huh. I'm very, I may, I'm considering strongly. Okay. Uh, we'll have a letter to you next for the next meeting. Yeah. So by, by, by the end of the week. Okay. How's that? By the end of next week. Yeah, we've got one here. Right. You've got one already. Can I get a copy of that file? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. 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 So once I get those, I will send a letter on behalf of the board. Mm. Uh, to Highland Valley. Yeah. yeah, why don't we do that? That would be best if it comes through you, I think. Yeah. Instead of us doing it individually. 
Well, if you submit your letters to the uh, you directly, to the <coughs> and then I will okay. write a letter on behalf of the board um, saying that you are resigning. And yeah, maybe at that point, okay. Kathy will know if she's signing or not. Okay. Okay. I should have yeah. okay. Okay. That's scary. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you could. I think that would just clear formality to it. Yeah. 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 I think we'll ask for yeah. a motion to. Oh, okay. oh, thank you. Sure. Your resignation from the Iowa Valley Board. Uh, Somebody make that. Somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. Good morning. Made the motion. Happy to have you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It's accepted. With regret. With regret. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sort of with regret. regret. Yeah. Thanks. Disheartened. Yeah, thank with you. Regret. It is regret. Thank you for your service. Yeah. We have hopes. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Put the time into it. I'm a fighter and I just don't can't yeah. see this one. Yeah. yeah. But you both get the feeling, or three of you, that there's going to be other resignations. Yeah. 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 yeah, there may be. I have just one other thing. Um, you probably all read in the newspaper that the marijuana dispensary oh. is going to be down here on Con Street. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if you have opinions about it or thoughts. There's going to be a meeting that I'll have to, I just found out about it. Um, that's going to be held at the dispensary about, really it's about Pleasant Street and I don't know that it's really about the dispensary itself. Um, so anyway, I, I actually was on camera um, to talk about it because I do have a, a concern with it being near a senior center, mm -hmm. near a high rise, high -rise. with seniors and disabled mm -hmm. as well as out here. It's in a real residential neighborhood. I can see the um, economic opportunity for the business owner because it's right off um, 991. The location is perfect. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying anything about the need of a dispensary. I'm just saying I don't know that it's needed right there where there are some very vulnerable people around here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, Is that the building across the street from Sample? It's the, no, it's the one that's the close to Stanley Hampshire. Is that it? It's oh, where yeah. the old... Uh, the doctor's office is used to be. Oh, so it's on the East Valley. Pioneer Valley. Pioneer Valley, sir. It's a right, yeah. right building that yeah. they did yeah. over. It used to be a cleaners. Yeah. It used to be a ground round, wasn't it? Yes, it used to be the ground round a long time ago. You're before my time now. So I'll let you know more about that, but it's okay about you know enhancing Pleasant Street, what the Pleasant Street neighborhood should look like. But um, yeah, I've, I've been doing a little research about um, how a dispensary gets uh, put into a location, and one of it is you know do people in the area want you know like who's living around the area, who would it impact? But you know, then I've been reading other articles that you know there's been dispensaries in I think it was Vermont that there's been no problems. And yeah. mm -hmm. Very little. I'm just anywhere. saying that it's in a very uh, an area where there's a lot of vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. so. Well, they moved it from the Pro Brush. That's where it was going yeah. right. originally, right. and I don't know how right. that got moved, but well, it's a better location for the owners, probably. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's uh, yeah. close to 91. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. it's not going to be one too close. So everyone's yeah. going to come in by yeah. highway and everything else. It's right there. Yeah. So that's his. So that's concern. all I have to say. Anybody Anyone can. else have any other new, oh, new business? No. No. There is none. Oh, I have something new just come up today. Uh, the senior center for people are going to be involved heavily with the Northampton Historical um, deal for the Northampton Day of Northampton History. Um, we're all giving assignments out, and so the old us, this Council on Aging and the Senior Center will get their name big time out there. Um, and we're being involved with the library, so kind of cool. Yeah. So Jim teaches a digital photography class here and has a number of students in that class. 
Okay. We're working really closely in hand <laughs> with Jim is good at talking people into doing things. So. <laughs> yes, Jim can talk people into doing things. How so Jim, is there already a date for like what the senior day is or yes. oh the senior no the, the day is the day for North for that is May fifth and sixth if May is that a, is that a that's Saturday? A Monday, Tuesday. Okay, it's a third that's and fourth day. <laughs> so it's yeah, a Friday, six. Saturday, oh, it's from one. midnight. Well, midnight midnight yeah. Friday, so you got all Friday day, you got all Saturday day, two, three, four, 48 four, hours of... Two, three, four. Yeah, two, three, four. Yeah, so it'll be yeah. two, three, and then it's 48 hours. That'd be great. So it's, great we've, we've already got, I've got some of our senior people, Janet's going to go out and work in her garden for me, up at the senior stuff at the... Um, community gardens? Community gardens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have her picture up there. Uh, I've got a pool tournament <coughs> set up. Or to be in the senior center, yeah. guys playing pool on a rotation basis for a bit. Well, it's history. It's yeah. a day of history. Oh, is a yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, yes. trying to figure out and talk to Patty about what might be happening in the senior center that day. Mm -hmm. That you know, hopefully, maybe we can get one of our illustrious board members to be doing something here. Wow. <laughs> okay. You know, mm -hmm. just you know, just about doing things in the mm -hmm. city mm -hmm. and slip. The senior center in where we'll be yeah, yeah. Perfect. Nice idea. Thanks for the yeah. contact. Jim, is there any update on the veterans? Uh... The, the drawing is 30th of this month. Oh, yay. Yes, thumbs up, guys. Positive thoughts. Positive thoughts. Yeah, send them your way. Okay, that was a busy meeting. Uh, accept the motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I second. Move to adjourn.